Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to introduce you to a brand new feature coming probably in C Sharp 12 called Primary Constructors. And I do say probably because those things can change, we have seen them change in the past as well. So take the 12 part with a grain of salt, but there is actually a build we can use, so I want to showcase the feature in this video. If you like the web content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe, ring the notification bell, and for more training, check out nickchapsas.com. Now, before I move on, I'd like to let you know that I just launched my brand new course, Cloud Fundamentals, AWS Services for C-Sharp Developers. And thanks to a very generous sponsorship from AWS, this course is free for everyone to enroll. You just click that link in the description, you sign up, you enroll, and it is yours to keep. In that course, I'm introducing you to the most popular services of AWS, especially the ones that us as C Sharp developers will definitely use. And you can actually build real systems with the knowledge you're going to gain out of this course. So even if you are not into cloud at all, or even if you're using another cloud provider, you're going to find something there to learn because there's cloud patterns and other practices that you can learn and adopt. And to celebrate the launch, I'm also offering the first 100 of you a 15% discount for any of my courses courses or any of the bundles at nickchapsters.com so to claim that use discount code aws15 at checkout and again a massive massive thank you to aws this could not be possible without them all right so let me show you what i have here i am on sharplab.io which is a website that allows me to write interactive c sharp and then see things like the lowered code the il and so on but the reason why i'm here is because one of the features is to choose a branch from the c -sharp compiler repository. So here I can go and say primary constructors, and now I can use the branch with this feature enabled. Now, again, this is still a work in progress and some things will change, but I wanna show you the idea behind the feature and how it will look like. Now, to show you how the feature works, I wanna show you one of the problems it tries to solve. So consider the following. We have a class a user with two private fields, first name and last name, to set those values, we require them from the constructor over here, and then we return a single property, which is a computed property based on the two fields. Now, this is fine, but it's also quite a bit, especially if you only have one constructor for this specific purpose. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lines of code to do this very simple thing. What primary constructors say is, okay, we don't need any of that. All you're going to do is take these over here and put them on the declaration of the class, and then remove everything. And now automatically, these two things are class scoped and they can be used in things like properties, methods, any way you want in this class. Now, those of you paying close attention are probably saying, wait a second, Nick, didn't we have that? If I have a record here, then I can have first name here, last name here, reuse it here, and that's it. And that is partially true. In this case, however, these are properties and they're publicly exposed. Here, they are fields and they are private. So it is quite a different thing trying to achieve the same sort of experience, this very nice single line of code way of declaring things like this. And the other very nice benefit of something like this is actually the most common use case that I think most of us do have. And that is probably dependency injection. So consider the following. We have a user service over here injecting a user repo and so on. And then we set that to a read-only field. And then we use that to do some action. Now, this can be two, three, four services. It doesn't matter. But usually your constructor, especially in modern applications, is used exclusively for this type of thing. Now, with primary constructors, you'll be able to do the following. You'll be able to say just, I use a repository on the constructor and remove all those private fields and the declarations in the constructor. And you have a very nice experience that does the exact same thing. There is actually one major difference, and that is that if I go to the lowered code over here, you will see that the field generated is not read only. It is actually a mutable field that I can go here and reset in any of the methods if I wanted to. Now, in the proposal for the feature, there's discussion about potentially allowing you to do read only here. It is not possible to do here yet, but there will be a way to achieve this. Another thing you'll be able to do is actually something like this. If you have a primary constructor and you want to use these values as default values for properties, then you can go ahead and just do that. Now, there's a bit of an interesting thing here. If you try to create a constructor, a secondary one, then all secondary constructors actually have to call using the this keyword to the main one. So there is no way you can get around this by just setting the values in there manually. You have 
to call into the main primary constructor. Now that's pretty cool, but what happens in the following scenario? What if, let's say, I have a user, again, first name, last name on primary constructor, and then I have a required keyword on a property that is also getting its value set by the primary constructor field over here. Well, if I go and I do something like this, then what do you expect the output to be? Well, as you might assume, the output will be pick. And it's going to be pick because first the value will be set from the field in here, and then the property value will be set from the setter in the initializer. So you have to be careful with things like this, and maybe the compiler team will actually add warnings or errors to not allow this to be possible, but currently it is, which is very, very interesting. Now, there's actually another pretty interesting feature that is missing from this implementation, and you might have noticed it as well. There is no way, if you want to have some logic in the primary constructor, to actually add it as the feature stands right now. Now, this will definitely be added. There are discussions and the proposals looked as follows. The first suggestion was to have something like this and assume that anything in here is constructor logic. So you come in here and you'll be able to use first name, last name and whatever to set your values. I hate this and thankfully it was dropped as an idea. The two things that might happen are actually the following. One of the proposals are this, which is the same as the constructor, but without the parentheses. It's gonna be something like this, where the values then can be used here and the constructor logic comes in. And the other one, which is my personal favorite, is actually the init keyword. So you come in here. Now I am biased because if you use the same feature in a language like Kotlin, which is one of my favorite languages, to code in, then you can do the exact same thing because Kotlin does have primary constructors and you can come in here and do whatever you want. But the reason why the Kotlin implementation is just way better than anything C Sharp will do because of their constraints is that these here are fields in Kotlin. But if I wanna turn them into mutable properties, all I need to say is var. And now they're publicly exposed properties in the same way that they are on records. And if I wanna have them as immutable public properties, then I say val, which is in my opinion a way better approach because now I have to still have the property declared and then set the field on the property and it's not as concise and tidy as I would personally like it to be. So it is a good feature, but depending on whether it's going to end up allowing properties to be directly exposed, allowing you to have the init keyword to have initialization, the primary constructor, and also allow you to turn this into read only, it can be a bit clunky. Now, another weird thing about this, and yes, there's many with this feature, is that as it stands right now, and if I go over here, you're going to see that these are fields, backing fields to those values that you can use in your class. But if I turn this into a record, then magically they will turn into properties. So it might look similar and nothing really change the way you see it, but now these are publicly exposed properties, while before with just a small keyword change, those are private mutable fields. It's very interesting and I'm a bit worried many people will get this thing wrong. I would prefer for the experience to be more consistent between records and classes, especially based on the fact that you can have a record class, or just a record, or a record struct it's one of those things that uh is this too much do we need this yes the benefits are there but the confusion is gonna cause i don't know but i'm just here to present you the feature and i'd like to know in the comments down below what do you think about this do you think this will be a net positive at the end of the day or is it gonna cause more confusion than the simplicity it's going to add leave a comment down below and please let me know as always when showing features like this the proposal is still open so if you want to have any suggestions for how this should be implemented or any ideas then you can go to the proposal which i'm going to link in the description down below and have a healthy discussion well that's all i had for you for this video thank you very much for watching special thanks to my patreons for making videos possible if you want to support me as well you're going to find the link in the description down below leave a like if you like this video subscribe more content like this and the bell as well and i'll see you in the next video Keep coding.